Hey guys, thanks for watching. In this update, I'm going to go over the charts, outline my future outlook of Bitcoin, but also briefly go over the FTX situation. As mentioned before, I am 90% a technical trader. I do pay attention to the news, but for me, fundamentals is very hard to quantify and really replicate to find a winning strategy. In terms of this FTX situation, it is eerily similar to the 2008 financial crisis and Lehman Brothers situation. And in some ways, FTX is the modern financial bank of crypto. And whilst FTX collapse has taken a lot of us by surprise, I do feel that capitulation has not completely happened. And we might find later that many other companies have gone bust, especially as FTX's demise as a huge amount of collateral damage to other companies, for example, Genesis. But then at the same time, you do wonder what could happen that's so bad. We've already dumped all the way down to 15.5k and you do start to wonder okay what event is going to be so bad that we have to dump further and that's definitely true but even looking back to 2008 financial crisis even when the big players went bust like lemon even beyond that many months later there was many collateral damage many other small companies started going bust so whilst history does not repeat 100 percent as humans we generally have the same emotions and we like to follow the emotions of the herd because that is somewhat of a comfort blanket. And events do replicate in some way. And I do believe that we do have that dot com flush to just completely wipe out the garbage in this crypto space. When Lehman happened itself in 2008, the S&P 500 actually dropped 40 percent. And a similar comparison to Bitcoin would be a drop down all the way to 9K. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm not ruling that out because it definitely could happen. And for us to really shift towards that bull market, we would really need that transparency regulation and just legislation to remove the corrupt characters in the space. And of course, we would need the Fed to pivot as well for us to lead to a bottom. And it's not so much crypto as a failed asset. I feel it's more the corruption and especially from central entities and central exchanges that's really causing a lot of the issues. I've been quite vocal about this and whilst I have set up this YouTube channel quite recently, I've been saying that from April we've been in these two parallel white lines in this downward sloping range. So this was a deviation play, this was a deviation play. play. We were ping pong against this. From April I said look guys I do believe that eventually we do hit that 17.5k region because it's a 786 and also potentially 11,500 to 11,800 because that is also the 886 from the Fibonacci from COVID lows. Also, 9 to 12K are key order blocks from 2017, 2018. It doesn't mean we always go there. And as I say before, the kind of person that always tries to predict bottoms often misses out because it's very hard to predict the bottom. And it's better just to play the ranges, in my opinion, because the, the chart tells a story. Something else interesting is this so i drew this purple trend line from actually pre 2017 and all the way from 2015 and if you draw it all the way it actually goes up to so between 8 to 9.5k and generally speaking sometimes instruments often revert back to a long term macro support line so I'm not saying it's going to happen, but as I said before, I prefer just to play the ranges. For me, the chart tells a story. I've also mentioned about this paid indicator. It's basically looking at margin pressure levels and looking at the habits of DGEN retail traders. And from that leverage in the system, seeing potential bounce region. I have left a link to the description if you are interested. Drawn the pin here at the local high at 21.5k recently on 6th of November. 16.1k is a 3x short margin pressure level so that means that at this point 16.1k people can short bitcoin on 3x leverage and hide the liquidation point above the recent local high 14.3k 
is a point in which you can short Bitcoin on 2x leverage and hide the liquidation point above 21.5k. 10.5k is the 1x short level in which people can short Bitcoin on 1x leverage and hide the liquidation point above the recent local high. So I'm not saying it's going to bounce here, but interesting because 13, 13.9k is actually one of the strongest support levels of, and SR levels of Bitcoin of all time. And I believe it is a support level on the monthly chart as well. On top of that, I've also mentioned how we've had key imbalances that have not been completely filled. So in particular, with this wick here and wick here, this imbalance has been filled from November 20, 2020. But we can always run down to here. This is a key imbalance as well. There's a wick here and a wick here. So this, definitely this 12.5 to 12k region could also have a dump as well. And of course, my last margin pressure I was looking at in this case, the 10.5k region. Also, we do have an imbalance in this region in the 10.1 to 10.5k region. And so I'm not saying price is going to return there. But there is some confluence as well because 10.5k region is a key margin pressure level. But as I always say, don't be the kind of person that constantly gets obsessed with tops and bottoms. Currently, I do believe the path of most pain is actually sideways movements, a choppy range and a tight range with no volatility. And that's actually irritating a lot of traders. And markets can go sideways a lot more than you can remain solvent. What's interesting here is that we have this dump all the way down here to 9th of November. And at this point, BBWP, which is a volatility indicator that I like, it's, it measures expansion and contraction. So in this region, in this dump, we fully expanded here to near the 100% level. And so that marked actually a local bottom in this case. And we had the run up, run, run up here. But in this chart, this 16.1K region has been key. And I do believe that to go back to 20k, we would need to break this 18.5k region as well. Could we go back up to 20k? It is possible. I'm not ruling it out. We do have certain imbalances, as I've mentioned before. For example, we have this wick here, this wick here. This imbalance here on the 4-hour chart has not been filled. So could we go back up to 19k region, 19.2k region to stop out shorts? Of course we could. Also, if you look on the daily chart, there is a huge imbalance. So in this case, we can see that there's a wick here and there's a wick here. This long imbalance here has not been filled. And there is a lot of liquidity actually, a fair bit lying in this 20k region, 20.5k region from people who have been shorting. So we could, you never know, we could always run up here and stop our shorts and come back down. So what I'm saying is always be flexible. Do not be rigid to the idea that your prediction or your local bottom has to happen by this date. Because believe me, I've been in this market long enough to know that things can go in a sideways range more than you can remain solvent. So we had on the four, and again, shapes are very subjective, but I drew this descending to triangle. We had this compression on the four, and then we broke down. Then, in my opinion, this was an, an ascending triangle in this case. This compression. These purple dotted lines. But We've slightly gone out of the range now, but again, shapes are actually very subjective and actually trading based on patterns is a very low probability and low win rate. So you have to definitely use it with other confluences. And, and what I've noticed is that sometimes in Bitcoin's case, it breaks down recently out of a descending triangle upwards, making people think that the descending triangle has failed and then it comes back down. So one thing to also consider is that generally speaking, a descending triangle once 75% full generally breaks down. It's very rare for descending triangles to fill all the way to the apex, but that's just something else. On the 4R, the BBWP is in a state of contraction now, so very low volatility. And so I do expect a potential move in the next two to three days. But of course, this is Friday, Saturday weekend action, and so it's not as reliable. And until we actually get a high time frame closure above this re recent local low of 15.4k or recent local high here of 18.1k, I do believe we're just stuck in this range. Also, weekend action is not as reliable and we may just gravitate towards the CME close. So currently the price of Bitcoin is 16,630 on the CME chart. 
it comes as 16,555. So we are somewhat close. Obviously, downside makes more sense in terms of fundamentals. But as I mentioned before, the path can just be sideways and choppy. Because I do believe the sideways range is really irritating a lot of traders. And it is the path of most pain, I would say. An interesting observation is that the funding rate is quite negative. So what that means is that speculators are generally bearish. And so they have to pay a premium to people who are taking longs on derivative exchanges. But it just recently flipped. It was positive yesterday. Now it's negative. So that's interesting as well. In terms of long to short ratio currently, on the 15 minute, we do have a net people who are sh short overall. Binance is mostly short now on the 15 minute. Bitfinex Wow is quite long the 15 minute. And Bybit is quite short. Yeah, you don't see FTX here anywhere. Going on the 1 hour. Okay, it's a bit more even and balanced, to be honest. So we can't really make any sort of um, conclusion on that. But, but Bybit is mostly long. Bitfinex is quite short. Bitfinex generally has older traders who've been in crypto quite long. So it's, it's nice to see what they have to say. Going on the four, again, we're quite balanced. And daily, we're quite balanced. Looking at the MDX dashboard on the 15 minute, we are quite long on Binance. And MDX algo takes out top trader data for Binance. So the API setting is nice because you can see what retail Binance traders are doing who are generally a bit less experienced. Buy bit are mostly short here. If you go on the one hour, okay, people are net long. Then on the four hour, people are net long. Okay, so people are net long here as well. So there's a bit of mixed views there between the long short ratios and the funding rate, which is interesting. Another thing, guys, I would say is don't get caught out by random pumps of altcoins. You have to look at Bitcoin dominance. And of course, back here, we had this huge run up in the 9th of September, taking out this structure, we had a pullback, we had a further run up, taking out a lot of structure, but now we've pushed down. And don't be surprised if we do get an increase in Bitcoin dominance. And just because Bitcoin dominance has gone up, it doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin has to increase in value. Bitcoin can still go sideways. But another potential scenario to consider is the banker's bonus. So there could be a situation which we have a dump now to 13.7k, 30.9k region or 10.5k, wherever we're low we go. And then we have a rally in late December. So bankers get their bonuses. So that's just something else to consider. But in terms of ranges, I do believe that we're the key range is 16.1k, 17.5k, 18.5k-ish. And of course, his recent local low is interesting, 15.4k and 16.8k. The aim of the game here is really buy support, sell resistance, or short resistance, and take profits at support. If you don't know what to do, just do nothing and wait for the breakout and play the retest. That's probably the higher probability setup. And especially when you're in no man's land in this middle of the range here, it's more awkward to trade. You can trade it, but it requires a bit more experience. So if you feel uncomfortable when you're in the middle of the range, you can honestly sit down. Me personally, I always go for high risk reward ratio trades. And for me, if I'm going, for example, a one to three risk reward ratio trade, I want at least the range to have at least a one to four, one to five risk reward possibility. If I'm going for a one to three risk reward ratio trade and the range only has a one to three risk reward ratio possibility, that doesn't give me enough breathing room as well. So that's something else to consider. Most people struggle with just sitting on their hands in difficult times like this. People are conditioned to always work hard for money, work hard, work hard. But as a trader, you have to know when to sit on your hands sometimes. I currently am on a long on Ethereum from 11.95. I did short around this region and I got five really good successive shorts in a row actually. I thought I would go for another long run here because this this region in, in Ethereum is a key order block, but we could go past through it. But again, if we do run up here, that for me is like a wonderful risk reward ratio trade. So for me, I'm just playing the ranges and going for high probability setups as usual. Of course, we can dump down here, but Notice I got my entry near the bottom of the range. I'm not trading 
in the middle of the range, and often trading in the middle of the range is like being in the middle of a dogfight. So it's just playing high probability setups. If you're in a situation where you're at support and you don't want to go long, but at the same time you feel it's going to go down, it's perhaps better just doing nothing and waiting for a breakdown, then waiting for the retest and shorting the support resistance flip down to the new support level. I've been trading personally Ethereum a lot more because I feel that Ethereum is holding up a bit better than Bitcoin now and it hasn't really gone down to test that 880 region. And I've just noticed a little bit more volatility in Ethereum, but they've just been sticking to Bitcoin and Ethereum trading more or less the last couple of months. And especially people who are new to trading, this is really a difficult environment to trade. And the more pairs you trade, the more you expose yourself and you're giving yourself a less margin of safety. For example, if you just trade one or two pairs now, if you get stopped out in a black swan event, that's fine. You've made a 1% loss depending on your risk management. But if you have 10 different altcoins open, you're going to get lose 10% of your account. If, assuming you're risking 1% each. So it's just playing things sensibly. And ultimately, I always ask myself, what is the worst possible scenario? Most people are trying to swing for the fence, trying to hit home runs. But I'm always thinking, okay, how do I live to fight another day? And ultimately, trading is about capital preservation. And this is definitely a risk-off environment. But I'm just looking at the charts and for me, the charts tell the story. Also, guys, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I made this channel 10 days ago, and I post videos about things like risk management, my Bitcoin analysis, and lessons I've learned, really, from my last 10 years of trading, and I'm constantly learning. So do subscribe and click the notification bell, because you won't really see these videos, because it's such a small channel. But thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and I'll catch you in a bit.